Hi guys. How's everyone? So we are going to talk about the happiest country in the world, Bhutan. And uh, Bhutan is hi. Bhutan is rated as the happiest country in the world. I think uh, most of you might know about it. And uh, yeah, of course, China and India ke border pe hai, Tibetan border amidst the mountains. And it's all about the nature. So people in Bhutan love nature and they love their natural... Um, hi. They love their natural, uh, like, beauty of the country and uh, what not. Hi, Kavi. Bhutan has literally everything to offer and it's mostly hi money it's mostly a buddhist community and uh, what happened yeah so it's mostly buddhist community and uh, uh, i think 70 percent is uh, buddhist so it's predominantly buddhist nation and otherwise um, they have hindu community as well and uh, Bhutan is one of the most beautiful countries. So, I'm good, Kavi. Thank you for asking. Hi, Mani Jen. Yeah, so we are going to talk about Bhutan today. And if you, how many of you have visited to Bhutan? Because of course, we as Indians doesn't need passport. And... Uh, Yes, yeah, so I'm going to pin it over here and I have Pamela with me to, she's going to share her experience about Bhutan and one of the most happiest in the world as per the, yeah. Hi. Hi. Hi, Pamela. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Very well, very well. So, yeah, um, we are here to talk about the happiest country in the world, <laughs> Bhutan, and you've been there. And I was yes. quite surprised when I saw this uh, happiness quotient ratio and Bhutan topped the list. And I was like, dude, what? This is, uh, uh, I mean, just in country to India and I've never been there. I was planning for it, but I mean, it could not happen and quite surprising. So I'm quite fortunate enough, I can say that I've been to Bhutan yeah. in 2018 in the month of January and I witnessed the first time snowfall over there. So it's beautiful, mm -hmm. I can say it's beautiful and you can get the uh, like Wi-Fi everywhere, even in the, you know, on the top of the mountain, even you can get the Wi-Fi over there. So beautiful. And everyone is happy. I was like surprisingly see that, that everyone, everyone was happy. So people are quite happy. They are very chilling about like they are really, really nice people, I can say. And the place is mm -hmm. worth visiting, you know, and you should visit. It's a beautiful place. So what do you think makes Bhutan a happy place? I mean, uh, what is so different about such a small country it is, of course, and on the top of the mountains and Buddhist, uh, I think most of the population is Buddhist. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I don't know. I think people don't celebrate their birthday as what I have read in a blog. And all of them, they celebrate their birthdays on a new year combinedly. And they least care about the age. And uh, they have life goals, something like that. Um, so I think I don't, I don't, I mean, what do you feel that people are so happy and what made them uh, the happiest people? So, you know, um, as I, I have seen that the, uh, in, in Bhutan, you, you don't find any beggar over there. No one is begging. You know, everyone is doing their own job. Mm. And I mean, everyone, you know, knows their responsibility, what to do at work, at work, 
you know what age i mean what to do i mean if they are like if they want to be a doctor or engineer or a shopkeeper they are happily doing that things and they you know they are very much patriotic i can say I mean, they love their nation too much i didn't find any magd or any kind of kfp over there quite surprising i mean they are they are like quite happy with their own you know nation national food they always enjoy to have that they don't prefer you know they they obey the rules too much they, you don't find any kind of you know honking system over there no honking yeah, system and if i'm not wrong there is no traffic light also found on they, i they, mean they there is no traffic light there is like a you know pedestrian like uh, that zebra crossing line so once mm-hmm. you will there so they i mean they know when to stop when to start everything is very systematic i can say very very wow. systematic so that's i guess that that is the main uh, i think main point the people are quite happy over there because what they are doing they are uh, you know they are i mean they kind of like okay fine it's my job it's my duty uh, if i want to do this or if i want to achieve something like more so let's work on that so they have not that high five level kind of expectation they know you know how to work hard how to like celebrate the small small piece of joy so i think that mm. is the main point that's why they are quite happy great mm. beautiful and i think <laughs> if i'm not wrong there is no uh, toxic i mean like alcohol and none of these things are allowed even cigarettes nice. are banned yeah. they do have which is actually officially everywhere you mean in india also even you are not allowed to have like alcohol or consume alcohol publicly but uh, they do have and in thimphu when i was there with my team so we uh, been to a place uh, which is i think viva viva um, viva night club somewhere so they do have alcohol over there we tried their uh, one of their local alcohol over there so it was quite nice so people even they know when to enjoy how to enjoy you know that they have their limited like time time frame then you can go out you can hang out with your friends and you can enjoy the alcohol so yeah they have nice so when did you travel to bhutan i traveled um in 2019 january mhm somebody is asking do we need passport no we don't uh okay so yeah we don't need any passport but there is like one official id would be there like either aadhar is not allowed voter card okay. or passport so okay. you have to uh, you have to carry that passport or voter card but be- because when you entered into phone selling phone selling is the like main key keep uh, you know um, i can say the main city you have to enter via bhutan Uh, to bhutan um so there is like one embassy over there in bhutan embassy you have to go there you have to, have to submit your document and they will like stamp on a, this and all so i did carry my passport with myself and they stamped on that passport they have kept everything so then they allowed and you are not allowed to travel solo that's also an important part you have okay. to travel with any travel agency yeah okay hmm. all right someone has a question about the adventure activities hmm so uh, can you guys tell about adventure activities there are a lot of adventure activities you can do in bhutan so i hmm. think that uh, there are a lot of you know like um, you can do um, what i can say uh, bungee jumping over there there is one place in bhutan uh, but I, i i traveled in january so everything was closed in that time and uh, you can you know trek to tiger nest it is a beautiful beautiful you know monastery like a 14 kilometers you have to go and it's beautiful it's not that tough difficult trek but yeah you can do that like uh, monastery hopping I, i mean not hopping exactly you can trek to that monastery so there is like river rafting even you can do that river rafting so a little bit of adventures are there i mean adventure activities are there in bhutan So you can opt. It depends which month you are going. Like I've been to like January. It was no more time. Extremely cold. Extremely cold. So yeah. But otherwise, there are uh, months like September, October, March. You can visit or you can even participate in the activities and all. 
So which are the best months during uh, October and these? Yeah, in September, October, uh, there are a few festivals actually are happening in Bhutan. So if you uh, been to that in that time, so you can you know um, you can take participate in those. I mean, you can even take participate or you can you know see this kind of like those festivals. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. So yeah, lovely. So uh, uh, and how many days you think one can cover uh, like? Um, not, I mean, of course, whole Bhutan can't be covered, but then most of the places and uh, maybe a little bit of trekking and few offbeat places as well. So uh, I traveled with Trip Hawker. There's a travel agency called. So it was like a kind of a kind of one week travel. I I I was like okay. I covered like phone selling, Timfu and Paru, but I didn't okay. travel the Punakha and Dachula Pass. Which is very much very famous place, I can say. But we okay. we didn't have much time, so we didn't cover the, those places. So yeah, if you want to visit Bhutan with a length of breadth, and you can like you know visit uh, a little bit of offbeat places like uh, ha, Ho Valley, Hao Valley or Ho Valley. I'm sorry, I think I mispronounced, but I don't remember the name right now. Ho Valley or Hao Valley, something like that, and the Punakha even. If you want to visit, I think. Um, 15 days, 14 to 15 days is enough to explore Bhutan proper. Okay. With all that we do. And what language do people speak? Do they understand Hindi? They do. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Bhutanese is very, uh, Bhutanese is not that tough language. When they will talk, you can understand even. Even they, mm. uh, they know uh, English. So if you are there mm. and if you don't understand Bhutanese properly, so yeah, English is there, and in, they understand a little bit of Hindi. Yeah, they understand. And what about the cuisines? Do you? That, I mean, I think they do have a lot of vegetarian cuisines as well. They have, they have a lot of vegetarian cuisines, but uh, there are like everything is datsi, like ema datsi, kima datsi, ema datsi is like chilies with cheese, and then uh, like uh, what I can say. Uh, Ema Datsi, Kima Datsi kind of this, like, cuisines are there. So they are, even they uh, do, they know how to make pizza. So they are, as, uh, you know, specific kind of pizzas, which is very much famous in Bhutan. Uh, if you've been there, you must try the pizza, which is full of cheese and their chilies, top of that. Very tasty, very yummy. Is the food uh, very spicy over there? Like, yeah. So you have to tell them, instruct them that please, uh, you know, uh, make it like a little bit less spicy because they love spice. They love chili. They love spices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So would you suggest or like, would you recommend any cafes or any dishes that one must try when in Bhutan? So cafe, uh, okay. So uh, when, uh, if you are planning for Bhutan, so mm -hmm. there is one, uh, you know, like, uh, like uh, Chalki Dhani is very famous for, uh, in Rajasthan. Kind of this, yeah. there is a simple Bhutan kind of, you know, a setup over there, which is in Thimphu. So if you Thimphu. are visiting there, yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, the Bhutanese uh, currency is NU, NU 300, which is like, mm -hmm. I think uh, in Indian currency is very less, I think 300 or 400 or 500, something like that. So you must visit that simply Bhutan, which is in mm -hmm. actually Thimphu. And they will provide you everything. Everything means you can, you know, feel that you are in proper Bhutan with all their amazing dishes. So when you mm -hmm. entered in Simply Bhutan, there is one rice wine, which is very famous in Bhutan, which called Ara. So they will provide Ara. you that little bit of yeah, Ara, rice wine. You can taste that. And then after that, you can, you know, uh, visit their sh shops, how they create like mask different different masks and uh, their you know history and their culture they will talk about and then there are like one performance which organized only for you we can take participate in those in that, that particular uh, they're very fond uh, of dances as well yeah they are very fond of that, dancing so you can even take part on that dancing part and then uh, one butter uh, butter tea i guess that is called suja butter uh, tea. Just Oh butter tea, that's a chai piece, you know, me butter dalke kind of this, they prefer this, suja, which is very famous. How so does it you taste? You can try it there. Pardon? 
how does it taste i have never imagined butter with the uh, chai i mean butter with chai and uh, they uh, you know they they provide with the snack is like puffed uh, puffed mm-hmm. rice which we call basically murmura or muri murmura ha murmura so they provide that even with the snack, as a snack so it's awesome it's beautiful it's amazing taste so yeah they have their own delicacies delicacies and you can try this like that hmm any specific dish you remember that you had i mean and you still miss it emadatsi which is like uh, green chilies green chilies with the cheese hmm. and potato in it lots of potato so i love potato so yeah that's beautiful and very tasty i can say <laughs> and is that roasted or something what no it's not roasted they simply prepare like a like a like a gravy kind of with lot of cheese and uh, chilies over there that's it okay nice and yeah so looks like bhutan is so much about food and so many cuisines to try of course and bhutan uh, today very very really, uh, i mean i can say very uh, friendly country one can visit and it's not that costly because being a mm-hmm. being an indian we have that privilege that you don't have to go there and you don't have to buy the you know there are like a certain rules for other people other nations like you have to buy uh, their bhutani some sort uh, sort of like set of rules like 250 dollar per day you have to spend and they will provide you guide uh, accommodation food and coming things but being an indian you don't have to do this if you know some bhutan travel agencies or in india if some travel agencies like they do bhutan trip so you can join them and it like my cost was like very very i can say reasonable because i booked my flight ticket via jet air and it cost me around like round, round trip is 6500 from delhi to Bag, uh, bagdogra yeah it was round trip and after that i spent like uh, i think 15 to 16000 for the travel agency to five, five night and six uh, six days with uh, accommodation uh, breakfast and dinner and commuting is included so uh, lunch part was our own so uh, everything include include like cost me around like 30k max so more than that with shopping even yeah. wow that's that's <laughs> amazing somebody is asking about the weather how is weather there mostly so uh vivek the weather is something like uh, in like uh, you know november to you know, february till february it's the winter season over there so if you visit there this you can experience the you know chilliest or coldest months over there and there are like a snowfalls in that time so uh, you can visit even all over the i mean around, around the year any time uh, because we don't have that much heavy monsoon kind of they don't have so you can visit any time like in april may even that's not very you know scorching heat is not like that but the best month if you want to experience some kind, sort of festivals and a beautiful like you know a coolest and warmest and the mixture of weather so you can visit like in the month of august september october and march even march april so you can visit in that time even i would rather suggest you to visit in january also because you can experience mm-hmm. the snowfall which is beautiful did you got chance to uh, like have, i mean uh, participate in any of the festivals so when we visit so uh, zong is zong means port so when we visited uh, in paro in january so there was one day festival no happened in that time in paro zong so mm. yeah we uh, we uh, got a chance to uh, see that particular festival that is completely local local festival you can only see but you can't participate in that way. so yeah we, we we have seen that it's beautiful like mask and they are dancing in that way it's a cultural program so they are offering their prayers to the god okay so with all the masquerade dancing and wow lovely yeah and so what is what did you love most about bhutan what do you i mean what is the best thing you find there about the people hospitality food or nature or anything so uh, i believe the nature of the people because obviously this is uh, bhutan has mesmerizing beauty i can say 
the nature as its base you know it's beautiful country i mean you even not see any kind of pollution it's pollution free i mean even not it's free but it's like a less pollution i can say then the honking you know honk free country then beggar free country then everyone is smiling everyone is ready to help you and everyone is you know very much willing to you know talk to you so i i remember that uh, once i visited a park to do some photography and then i met a small child i was like this he i think he is like a 10 to 11 years and he asked me that i never seen train because in bhutan there is no train railway system so he said that once i will you know i will be older i will definitely visit india to experience the train the rail so i asked him that uh, did you miss the rail and train there so he said no no i i didn't miss i i mean like uh, i love to explore one day the whole world but i'm happy with my country my country is so beautiful you can you know explore the parks you can explore the nature you can explore the mountains mm-hmm. so at his level of age he is quite i mean i found him i mean you know he is like he is very happy i mean he he might has have some kind of you know i can say uh, dreams to visit different different countries but he is not like mm-hmm. i have to do it i have to do it. he is not running behind anything and everything mm-hmm. so i think that is the main uh, part uh, in bhutan which makes the country incredible yeah even a child is so content with uh, i mean himself and which is one of the i think very remarkable thing because yeah. we grow up and even as adults we don't find ourselves very content and very satisfied with what we're doing at times mm-hmm. and this is amazing i think this That's- is this is something that makes bhutan the happiest country people are very happy with what they are and what they have and they are very acceptable and friendly they always be very acceptable i mean they are very happy what they have mm-hmm. they they know how to enjoy the small moments in life right they are very happy in that sense like they cherish every moment so Drop. they have they dreams dream. but they are not run behind anything hmm there are few questions oh itne paise aayenge kahan se raj karne ko you can do backpacking also you don't have to necessarily spend 30k i'm sure there are other options by road also we can go from india na other if if somebody doesn't want to take a flight then from the borders they can go by road also and about the transportation in bhutan yeah so something about the transportation within bhutan you can tell so transportation they have their local uh, you know buses uh, there they have their like uh, cars over there so yeah transportation is not that uh, uh, not that you know costly i can say you can easily travel but it, as i told mm-hmm. as i told that you have to take any kind of travel agencies and there are a lot of travel agencies in india even they mm-hmm. uh, do bhutan trip with a very very mm-hmm. reasonable price like i have been to bhutan like for one week i i uh, i you know flew from delhi to bangdogra then i visited like we uh, we had a like uh, i can say that small uh, 12 seater that uh, transporter mm-hmm. and then we are traveler then we stayed at three star property uh, mm-hmm. like dinner lunch was included i bought so many uh, stuffs for my family friends so it cost me around 30 30 k i mean max to max with everything so it's not that mm-hmm. costly country you can easily easily can do uh, like mm-hmm. at per your budget completely depends from person to person i mean exactly. you don't have to shop necessarily you don't have to stay in three stars depends on i mean people right mm-hmm. and on mm-hmm. there's always an option to choose and i'm sure there might be homestays and less expensive hotels and i'm not sure about hostels though um they they, I mean, they have hostels uh, when mm-hmm. i was there there were very limited hostels because i inquired mm-hmm. about it but i think now they are expanding and their food is very reasonable price like 100 150 you can get proper breakfast 100 150 bucks like this and quite fulfilling ah okay 
asking about local transportation yeah she said local transportation there are buses huh there are local buses there are local you know that local innova kind of things are going so you can uh, like take the shuffle way you can do that okay so instead of taking full cab maybe one can share a cab something like that do they have anything like uber ola like we do have no they don't have it no such service Okay. In two thousand nineteen, nineteen, I didn't find anything like no local Uber, no Ola, no Pagdi, no KFC, no any chain like Pizza Hut. Nothing was there. They had their everything their own, catered at at the same place like uh, Bhutanese everything you can say. Hmm. Okay. And what about the places? What places you would suggest? Um, whoever is going for the first time. So definitely. um i'd suggest that uh, if you are uh, going to bhutan so phuntsiling would be the main way uh, the main uh, city you have to cross to enter bhutan because uh, in india and uh, for in india and bhutan border phuntsiling is the border uh, city you have to cross that uh, from india if you go by roadway or roadways or train train way or uh, they have uh, one airport at paru but which is very expensive mm-hmm. Drug airport are there, which is very expensive. So if you are looking for something for budgeted like that, and uh, so then uh, phone selling you have you have to cross like must. So phone selling is the place city which is like for one day trip. There are, like there are two uh, monasteries over there, so you have to visit there. And then Paru and Thimphu is the must visit places because. And the, uh, if you want to do the tiger net trekking, so Paru and Thimphu are the must. And uh, don't skip Punakha even. I heard it's beautiful, though I didn't have that uh, time to visit Punakha, but Punakha you should include in your trip. So Paru, Thimphu, and Punakha. So in Thimphu, you will um, you will cherish the one of the uh, tallest Buddha, Dondoma Buddha, Tupa. So it's beautiful. It's tallest. It's entry free. So you can visit that. Then in Thimphu, you can visit the Simply Buddha, which I told just now. And then uh, then you in Paru you. you know you you visit that tiger nest and there are like other places also so yeah paro thimphu paro zong national library a lot of places are there did you got the chance to uh, go inside any of the monasteries yes so that tiger nest itself is a monastery so yeah i've been there then uh, in paro zong there are like uh, there is a small monastery so yeah i've been there then there is like natural uh, National How monastery was over there. It's beautiful. How was your experience within the monastery? How did you feel? Did you do any of the Buddhist prayers or meditation or something? It's so beautiful, you know. When whenever you enter any kind of Buddhist monastery, even not in Bhutan, even in Peel, Machal Pradesh, wherever you visit, mm-hmm. so very calm. I can say very peace. I mean. I mean, it's not like like other places. Like you have to like donate something or you have to like pray something. Mm-hmm. You just treat and you just you just enjoy the you know cherish the moment. You just feel that positive vibes. This is beautiful. And they are uh, chanting their own mantra that way. So calm, so so relaxing. I can say. Hmm. So it is something that can be felt over there. I mean, one can experience. I mean, one yeah. one can experience the the vibes. Hmm. I remember I've been to monastery uh, uh, near to the Lai Lama Temple in mm-hmm. Mekong. That I'm sure. Was very was very very calm, like such peaceful vibes, and there is a kind of vibration that I could feel over there. uh i mean i don't know uh, somebody was meditating and obviously obviously the monks uh, when they are there the monks are meditating and all and there is a kind of vibe and some vibrations that i could feel which is very relaxing very relaxing and i mean dude it's so amazing i could totally imagine and uh, bhutan being the uh, buddhist um uh, kind of we can say headquarters or something because most mm-hmm. of the population is monks over there and it's all together exactly. different vibe of course so yeah anything else uh, about the clothing as well they do have different uh, kind of 
um i mean they what do they wear i mean the local uh i think that's very different from what we something like kimono kind of it's not exactly kimono so they have their different kind of you know clothing or dressing system i can say but which uh, you know uh, very similar to kimono so mm. they have i mean uh, okay so now they are uh, they are into little bit of modernization or something so they are wearing everything but yeah in terms of traditional visit or in terms of traditional like i visited their uh, you know uh, national post office so the ladies the female uh, who who are working over there so they all were wearing that their traditional kimono kind of dress so yeah i mean i think that bhutan has its this is the most unique part in bhutan that whenever everyone is like into very much tradition uh, you know modernization accepting western thing they are somehow maintaining their own decorum their own traditional you know attire everything i mean which is very i mean very unique you know when you visit some places in this way so you can find their own tradition still now exist mm-hmm. and they need to respect those traditions and those like you know um, i can say culture they do respect a lot so yeah that's amazing like in the world of modernization they still hold up to their culture and they still respect exactly. it so much which is amazing did you try any of the cultural or like like traditional dresses or something? yeah so when we visited the simply bhutan now so <laughs> they have everything like if you want to mm-hmm. try their traditional cultural dress you can wear that so and uh, they have their different different dance performance so you can even participate and they have their different kind of prayers or their cultural drama you can participate in those so we didn't have much time but we spent like almost 2.2.5 2. to 3 hours over there so yeah i have tried their one of their cultural uh, traditional dress which is like beautiful i mean <laughs> you can feel that different kind of culture you know cross culture i can say when you visit some new place and you like you try their food you try their cultural clothing and all it's beautiful like feel i can say beautiful beautiful i will really have added bhutan to my bucket list by now and i hope i'll visit it soon so anything you would uh, so which was the last place you traveled and where are you planning to travel next i just came back from jim corbett a few days back so oh, wow so i uh, visited jim corbett uh, i mean it, it it was like my fourth time visit so i've been there to promote our property and uh, yeah it was beautiful i mean like fourth time i've been there and i still find like it's beautiful place i can say so this time we visited a uh, a uh, like hidden gem i can say a hidden place uh, waterfalls which is called barat barati ka ro matlab this is a fl- falls which is like uh, you know in in the jungle in the you have to ask local to visit there you have to take the permit and you have to mm-hmm. and then you can visit it's a beautiful place so yeah that that was my last visit and i'm planning to visit varanasi next okay wow both of them are lovely places i've been to jim corbett recently i mean oh. yeah and uh, we did safari although of course i didn't get to see tiger or anything but <laughs> we, we were lucky enough to see the paws i mean uh, the uh, footprints of tiger and uh, we get to visit one of the waterfalls uh, which is close to the temples uh, we had mm-hmm. to trek all the way until there and it's always uh, very like a kind of a different experience each time i visit uh that i mean although um there are so many unexplored places that we can of course like you said one of the uh, waterfalls that is not so popular and likewise <laughs> each time the place becomes special exactly i mean each place has their own something which is very much you know i can say uh not very popular so whenever you will visit those places if you stay there you know not to rush like that so you can i think you can explore those hidden gems and which are beautiful uh this is kind of a travel real india <laughs> or any of the places yeah. in the world true true 
Absolutely. And especially uh, talking to the locals and spending more time with locals gives the realist sense of the place and you get to know what do they think, how do they actually live their lives and there's so much learning that comes along the way. That's true. That's true. So this time I visited, when I visited Jim Corbett, so there was one local Kumayani festival was going on. So uh, I, I can say that I like, I was quite fortunate that I tried their complete Kumayani Thali and I got to know a lot of about their uh, dishes, like Kumayani dishes, like the raita they prepare, which is different with the mustard and that, uh, you know, something like, then the bhangke laddu, something called bhangke laddu. <laughs> Ah, there are a lot of things. You tried like, them as well? Haan, I tried and I asked them that this will not go to me. They said that they will eat it and they will eat it. So a lot of things like dal, they prepare their dal, their bhaji. You know, everything is very different. It's not like we, we used to eat in a regular way. So in a very traditional way, mein they prepare everything. Like sada bhat and all, amre ki chutney and all. So beautiful. Like the essence, local essence I can say. Whenever you visit any place, you can definitely see or definitely you know experience little bit of local there so that's that's really very really good yeah that's what traveling is all about otherwise yeah. if you visit a place and just touch the place and not really get the essence real essence of the place you would mm. not feel that i mean that change or that kind of uh, that's true yeah so, and what do you think how traveling, because you travel so much and how do, how do you think traveling has changed you as a person or brought something to your personality, added something to you? So, uh, I guess uh, I have started traveling in uh, like, I think 2011 or something. Like, I, uh, 2012, whenever I come finished my graduation and after that I started traveling in that way. So um, I think that, uh, you know, travel uh, makes you a person you always dreamed of. Like, you know, mm. when you travel solo, for my case, mm. I mostly travel solo. And sometimes with group as well, sometimes with family. So I don't have that much preferences whenever I get <laughs> <laughs> Love to travel. So yeah, uh, like travel, you know, makes you the person you want to be. Uh, like you can, you cannot be impulsive while traveling. Like agar aap, uh, akele solo travel kar rahe ho, so you always like you know that that way that uh, like you know when to take decision properly. You know when to what to talk, when to talk, what could be your uh, you know exact decision, how to talk with local and being a, I think being a female, it is also very much important for us. When we travel, we should know that what should be our limitations, like, you know, assumptions uh, about the travel, about the places, about the you know, location, culture. And obviously before traveling, you, you, you may do some research about the place. So yeah, it also make you a person and uh, like, as you know, the people are like here, they are, you know, attending because why they are attending? Because they will know, they love to travel and they know that how you and being a, being a traveler, what could be your like, uh, you know, uh, I can say, kya kya problems are sakte hai? What are the problems you can face and how you overcome all those problems and day by day you experience all these things. So I think travel is the best way you can experience that, uh, what I can say, experience your own inner yes. nature. You can, you know, you can be a person you dreamed of like that way. Hmm. Of course, absolutely, absolutely correct. And it makes you, um, I think for me, I have become more uh, fearless because mm -hmm. when I was like, when I was a kid or maybe when I was in school, even during the college time, I was a little scared, you know, how am I going to travel solo? What I'm going to do during the night? So I have so many questions until I actually travel solo. So I got to know because I think most of the time it's about the intuition that I myself understand that this person is like this or this person is like this and how friendly I should be with someone and what are my uh, levels like you said and so it automatically we get to understand when we are traveling and I think it's all about the intuitions that we get and it's all about our 
uh, sometimes there's the sixth sense that tells us that we should not go here during that late times and whatever. And uh, it's obviously you get to meet new people, get to know so much about their lives and how do they tackle their things, which somehow helps ourselves as well uh, to grow as a person. So, of course, I mean, solo traveling has definitely changed a lot in myself and I would definitely uh, travel solo. I mean, I would prefer traveling solo than traveling in a group or family or friends. But of course, I do all of it. When we actually, what happens when we stay at home, we have our own family, we, ha we have our own job, we have our own, everything is surrounded by us, which is very, you know, which give us comfort. But when you mm -hmm. travel, you uh, are the one only who can, you know, carry your own essence to the other places. You meet people, you meet local culture, you try new dishes, you try new place, you know, you travel solo to an unknown path, you you might want to experience something which is like very different, which you never experienced. So travel gives you wholesome, uh, I can say knowledge, which, uh, you know, enhance your skills, which enhance your own knowledge, which makes you a person, like a completely wholesome person. So, you don't like you don't mind in anything like you are the people like you are the person like you know you when you travel anywhere any place so you just you love to be there like that way just feel the vibes nothing matters absolutely absolutely and especially as a female there are so many things like from the family side from like my friends ask me why do you travel solo what do you like about traveling solo and I think there's always a different experience uh, while always. traveling solo. I get closer to myself. I get to learn so much about myself rather than anybody else, which I never would have figured out otherwise. So, of course, it is quite a learning, quite a learning. Yeah, exactly. so coming back to Bhutan. <laughs> so, <laughs> anything uh, you would uh, uh, you would uh, suggest people uh, while packing? Uh, any, like, things to carry or... Okay, Maybe so like when you, shoes or comfortable. So whenever you travel to Bhutan, it's mandate you can you you should pack your bag with light you know dresses like light clothings and with warm clothes as well because Bhutan has the I mean different different places have different different weather kind of thing like somewhere in the summer even you can feel some like chilling vibes so you should carry some warm clothes mm -hmm. and trekking shoes mandate because uh, Bhutan is like you know it's it's situated in the in the surrounding of the mountains so yeah uh, comfortable trekking shoes are very much important and you should obey the rules I mean obey the rules there you should because they all believe in Buddhism so please make sure that you should not insult their culture, which is very much important. You should not be very harsh about their people, their food, anything. Like, if you don't like, there is a way to express uh, the things. Like, How strict are they about their culture and rules? Yeah, and very, what if somebody breaks it? Are there any sort of fine or punishment, something? They are very strict. They are very, very strict because they, they obey their king as a god king and queen. Mm -hmm. So when you visit any kind of restaurant or any uh, shops or any places, so you can find their king and queen's picture over there, you know. So okay. um, very much important that you should obey all these things. You should not love on them. So otherwise, it, it is very much punishable. You know, it's a kind of a crime because they love their king and queen so much. They obey them as a god. So yeah, don't, I mean, it, you know, it's not only about Bhutan. I, I think that whenever we visit any places or any kind of, you know, um, village in India or outside of India, anywhere, we should definitely obey their culture. Definitely. It's uh, not important. We should obey their culture because we have our own culture. When we visited, like, I, I have been though. That's why I'm saying. When we visit like Kedarnath, Badrinath or, you know, Ajmer Sharif, we have our own culture. We believe that. We always feel, feel that whenever other people, you know, come to that place, they should obey the culture. So definitely being a traveler, not the tourist. Even as a tourist, we should obey everything. So, yeah. Important. Definitely. Yeah. And it's always good to uh, follow the rules, obey their culture and kind of 
this way we can of course uh, try out new things i mean exactly. like in ajmer sharif you have to cover your head and in other places there is some of the other things that you have to follow and when you do so so it's always good to uh, be into i mean a part of us into the new culture and try that out and it's lovely to do exactly yeah yeah so about the things you said that we sh- one should carry a uh, light like pack light and carry winter as well as summer both clothes because they have mix of weathers uh, varying to the places and comfortable trekking shoes of course because it's mountain area so one has to definitely walk a lot and what else about the rain they uh, they uh, don't have that much i mean apart from rainy season there is not much mm-hmm. rain there so yeah but water bottle should be there you should carry your own water bottle okay it should be it's our duty to uh, uh, make this place uh, you know carbon free so you should mm-hmm. carry your own water bottle plastic free yeah and i think bhutan is already plastic free they don't uh, use that much of plastic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they don't use that much plastic mm-hmm. being on the mountains and it's very important yeah otherwise also we should not use plastic for sure and it is yeah yeah so anything else you would like to share any story of yours that you remember from bhutan like you told about that little kid and how he is so happy and content with himself or any other festivals or something that is very special to you from the country so bhutan is actually a very happy place as i shared and uh, i remember when uh, i was doing that tiger nest so i am not a very active trekker frankly speaking though i do uh, i did a few but uh, not very actively uh, i need some mm-hmm. kickback so uh, i was the last one in my group everyone already you know reached that high level and i was the last one who trekked a little bit slowly slowly and when i was like middle of that uh, agnes trek so it was started snowfall and the first snow in the year and i was like i was like a happy kid you know Uh, snow is like uh, you know my uh, white snows are all covered everything and then i started you know feeling like a little bit of uh, and it's scary kind of like i was all alone and it was you mm-hmm. know it was snowing everywhere every everything turned to like suddenly turned to the white and i was like okay aage jao ki na jao back kar jao and then i uh, i suddenly i seen a monk like a uh, buddhist monk he was like slowly slowly he was going to that Agnes Monastery. So mm. he asked me, "Why are you stopped?" I said, "I feel a little bit of fear. Shall I go or shall I come back?" So then he started talking to me. So he was chanting. He, uh, I mean, some mantra kind of. Always they chanted in that way. But he, uh, he said, "Let's talk. Let's talk and let's do. You know, जब हम दोनों साथ में चलेंगे, तो he knows Hindi." So he knew Hindi in that time. So he was like, "जब हम साथ में चलेंगे तो थोड़ा सा रास्ता भी हल्का हो जाएगा and you will easily reach that point." Then he start. We started talking and um, he narrated a lot of stories in his whole life. He narrated about that Tigerness uh, monastery. He narrated about Bhutan, about the their uh, you know their national animal and a lot of things. Like it was incredible. path i can say it was incredible so uh, i mean half of the way i i was like with him and uh, he took me to that monastery he introduced me that this is the buddhism culture and everything like that and it was beautiful experience i can say it's beautiful yeah would you like to share something out of what he narrated so he narrated about a story about a foreigner i mean about a woman who basically uh, who was from uh, switzerland so he said that he's like uh, she she was like at her late 60s and she came here she was like uh, no i can't do this i can't do this but she did it because of her will power so it's all about the will power if you have your will power you can you know you can conquer everything and um, that's the main thing she now uh, last year she again came like for three third time so she did always this 
trekking things. She did already another trekking, like uh, I think, and she did also EBC Everest base camp. So he said wow. that it's all about our willpower, how you, uh, you know, change our life in that way with the willpower. Because age is doesn't matter. Age is just a number. Like if people do it at their sixties or seventies, yeah. then you yeah. can do it. So I was like, oh, I should do it. Like. Wow. <laughs> Wow, so that's, that's quite a motivation, I think, for people who are, like, uh, scared of trekking. I mean, I'm not so much of, like, trekking fan. And hearing this makes me feel, uh, I mean, like, dude, if, a, if somebody, if a lady at 60 can do the treks that she can't think of, I mean, probably our grandma's age, you know. Now, another trek camp for the that 14, 15 days trek. So it's, like, really, very inspiring. Very, very inspiring. Wow. And the Everest base camp, it starts from Thimphu. No, it starts from Nepal, Kathmandu. Okay, okay. Huh. Mm -hmm. so, start ah. from Nepal. Everest base camp has, uh, I think, two routes. But every every route has start from Nepal. Only. Nepal is the base point. So you have to reach Nepal first. And then you have to go to Lukla. Nepal, uh, from Kathmandu to Lukla, there is a, like a small, very tiniest airlines. So you have to go to Lukla and from there you, ha you have to start the Everest Race Camp Trek. It's a 14 to 15 days trek, I guess. So I want to do that, it even. <laughs> yeah, even I would not, I want to do it. But I think uh, there's a lot of practice that might be needed for it. I mean, we need to do a lot of treks before we actually go for the Everest. Uh, what I read about uh, and what I, I spoke to uh, two to three people, one uh, one of them are my friend. I mean, so I spoke to them and they're saying that it's not that difficult, right? It's, it's technically challenged, you can say. I mean, you have to overcome the like, you know, breathing control. And because it's like a 14 to 15 days long trekking, so you have to prepare your mind in that way that you have to do it by any way. And that aim is altitude uh, sickness, motion motion sickness. You have to control that. You have to take the medicines and all. And a little bit of walking or uh, exercise. That is enough. It's not difficult trekking, but it's technically uh, uh, challenge trekking, I can say. So, yeah. hmm. Hmm. Of course, it's 15 days, half a month you're there. And that to at high altitudes. Um, there is a lot that one might has to go through. So one has to be really fit, I think. Exactly. Yeah, and mentally prepared as well. Mentally prepared. That's important. So when are you planning to go for it? I'm planning to do, if everything is, you know, goes well, maybe this year, September, which is a good time. I mean, there are two times you can go in any way you can go like uh, three to four times I mean three to four times a year to do the Everest base camp trekking but March and April and September October is the best time so I'm planning for the September October <laughs> if everything goes well lovely lovely and I'm sure you will share your experience once you go there and yeah we get to know from you how is the whole thing and uh, a lot of these days it's easy because I think there are a few uh, tours and there are guided tours and they do have entire medical setup and everything so it's a little easier now to... yeah I mean uh, in terms of medical facilities yeah but still uh, I mean the trek the trekking path is quite challenging because you have to anyway do that, like you know, by you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's oh, like course. fourteen to fifteen days. Otherwise, you have like guide or water or everything. But yeah, the trekking part is quite challenging. Yeah, so yeah, thank you so much. It was lovely to have you and hear all the uh, experience from you. And we got to know so much about Bhutan. And I think it's definitely going to help people who will watch it later. I'm going to save the video. And whoever is going to watch it, they will definitely, it's going to help them to plan their trip to Bhutan. And uh, yeah, of course. Um, get all the happiness from the happiest country in the world. Thank you so Thank much, Asta, for having me. Because it was lovely, lovely chatting with you. And Same. again, I was like, mesmerize my trip to Bhutan. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I'm definitely going to plan soon for Bhutan. So yeah, now I'm all decked up for it.
And thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing all the info. Thank you so much. Lovely talking. Okay. Same here. Bye-bye. Good night.